Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Balanced Diet, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little burgundy. And if you do enjoy this video, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, chrome yellow, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, green oxide, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, Mars black, and fire red. And of course, you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number eight round brush, and I have a number three round brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up a little bit as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do provide you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy palette that I use and all that good stuff, so that's down there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the first step is I'm gonna be painting my background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are white, yellow, and brown. And this is just meant to look like a dreamy kind of background. It's not necessarily meant to look like outside or anything of that nature. So I'm just gonna go for a almost like a swirl type effect where it's almost gonna put my big stack of fruit in like a spotlight kind of thing. So I'm gonna start with white paint on my brush. And I'm gonna go for a really light area right about here. And then it's gonna just fade out into a little bit more of a darker area. But I'm gonna put a really large area of white paint. My white paint's probably gonna be about this wide by about this tall. And once I've got that big, huge area of white paint on there, then I'm gonna start introducing a little bit of yellow. So I'm gonna go white with just a tiny bit of yellow on my brush. I know that the yellow can really take over and be really quite powerful. And I don't necessarily want it to take over on my canvas. I want my background to kind of just fade into the background. So I don't want it to be really um, too bright on me. So that's probably the only time I'm gonna pick up yellow. Now I'm gonna pick up white with a touch of brown and I did not wash my brush. So what's gonna happen is whatever remnants of yellow I had on my brush, it will work its way into that brown that I just put on there as well. And you may notice as I'm going through this process that I back into the previous color as I'm doing this um, blending type brush stroke and I've got my my tan or my cream color that's just kind of blending into that pale yellow that we created. I like to do that because it really helps me to blend those colors and make them look like they're naturally going gradually into one another. And you can make yours as light or as dark as you want. You can keep adjusting it with the quantity of white or brown that you're adding to it. And you can see I'm working pretty much on my top of the um, canvas right now. And I will begin to work on the bottom in a minute, but I'm gonna be 
making the bottom of my canvas a little bit darker. So that's why I'm kind of staying up in the top region for the moment while I've got this value of the tan type color on my, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting a little distracted. In the background, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I have another, those of you who've watched me before, I have another woodpecker that's pecking on my house right now. So hopefully it won't um, stay there for too long. Normally when I'm off camera, I start yelling at the woodpecker <laughs> to get off of my house, but I can't do that while I'm videotaping. So we'll see if it, if it decides to go away all on its own. But um, if I seem a little distracted at times, that's probably what's, what's doing it for me. So as I'm coming down towards the bottom of my canvas, I am going to be picking up more brown paint on my brush because I'd like this to go darker and darker as it comes down towards the bottom of the canvas. And that's just a visual preference on my part. I like uh, my paintings to have dimensional elements to them. And for me, putting this bit of darkness down at the bottom will provide that look, even though I'm going for kind of an abstract type background, just giving that information that it's a little bit darker down at the bottom can provide it, even in the abstract kind of world, it can provide bits of like a dimensional element. And then we are going to be switching to our pencil for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful background all nice and created, you could paint the edges of your canvas if you want to, um, but we are going to be switching to our pencil so you can get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we are drawing an outline of all of our fruit and our hand. So I'm going to be using my pencil. I do want to forewarn you, though, that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So, you know, you could take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you could sit here and blow on it if you want or use some kind of fanning method. But that might take you a little bit longer than you expect. Or you could do the easiest method that I choose to do, which is I just whipped out a blow dryer and blow dried my canvas. So yours might be dry by now. If it's not, I do recommend one of those methods because we're gonna be drying with a pencil and a pencil is hard to use on wet paint. So how we're gonna do this is I am going to be constructing my stack of fruit in a from top to bottom kind of way. As I'm constructing mine, I am kind of keeping in mind that uh, the name of this painting is A Balanced Diet, so I want to kind of look like it's a, in a balanced kind of way. Um, you may opt to do different fruit than I'm doing. I am not going to be making them perfect. They are going to be a little off-centered here and there, but um, I'm just going to have a whole bunch of fun creating it, and of course you can use some different fruit if you want to. I'm going to make it as if it's kind of like a pineapple type sandwich thing. I'm going to have the top as a pineapple, and well the bottom's going to be a banana, because I figured the banana would be able to hold that all up, but there's going to be a banana at the bottom and then a sliver, the bottom part of the pineapple. So we'll have a pineapple top, a pineapple bottom, and a whole bunch of different mixed fruit within the middle of it. So I'm going to start with my pineapple top. Um, I'm going to have this, if you kind of find the halfway point of the top of your canvas, I'm going to start the top of my pineapple, not the um, greenery that comes out the top, but the actual um, rind itself will be, I would say, about almost a quarter of the way down my canvas. So I'm going to make myself a little bit of a marker there. And then my the bottom of that rind, I'm only going to make maybe about an inch, inch and a half farther down than that and it's gonna come out to about here and here. So these are about a quarter of the way in your canvas um, from either side, and they're a little bit lower than this. So you can make yourself a couple of additional markers, and then I'm gonna just kind of connect these two. The center is gonna be pretty darn flat, um, and it's just gonna kind of curve over at the end. And same thing with the top. I'm thinking, what does a pineapple look like? And it is kind of, a little on the flatter side on the top and then it just kind of comes down and they're not symmetrical. One side's going to be bigger than the other and depending on how you cut your pineapple, <laughs> one side could definitely be a little bit bigger than the other as well. So something like that is going to start my pineapple. I'm going to have a little lemon underneath it. So I'm going to put the bottom of the lemon maybe about an inch, inch and a half away. And my lemon's only going to be maybe about two, two and a half inches wide. And I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of a rounded shape on the side. 
maybe something coming down in through here, a little rounded shape on that side. And again, they don't have to be perfect. We're just doing like a section of the fruit. Then my next one is going to be an apple. So I'm gonna put this one, maybe the bottom of the apple is about two inches below my lemon. And I want it to come out farther because to me an apple is a little bit bigger than a lemon. So I'm gonna have this out a little bit further. So I'm gonna make myself a bit of a curved line for the bottom of my apple. And then I'm gonna have it look like there it's um, cut in the middle of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a um, interior area right here. And then I'm going to make myself an exterior area over here. And then on this side, I'm going to make it look like there. this is the top of the apple in through here. We'll put a little bit of a stem on there later. So my next one that I'm doing is a, um, a grapefruit. So this is going to be bigger than my apple. And it's even, I'm going to have mine a little bit wider than my pineapple. I'm gonna come down, this is gonna be the bottom of it. I'm gonna come down maybe about an inch and a half from that one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the bottom edge of it. And I'm gonna have this one kind of tipped a little bit. So I'm gonna have this one coming out further than my um, pineapple, so maybe about to here. It's gonna have a little bit of a curve to it. This is the bottom edge of it, something like this. And again, I'm gonna have the exterior is gonna be maybe about as far as this one, but Maybe since I've got it tipped, I'll, I'll bring the bottom part a little bit shy of that. And then what I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna have it look like it's sliced open. So I'm going to come up my apple a little bit in through here. And when I come over here, I want it to come, my um, curve is gonna come about as far as here. So I'm gonna bring this over in through this vicinity. And I'm gonna bring, this is kind of like a long oval. And to me, a uh, because a grapefruit is so wide and I've got a thin slice of it, it might kind of be a little wobbly or saggy. So I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit further down on this left-hand side, and we're gonna see more of the inside of the um, fruit on this left-hand side. And I'm gonna bring this out a little bit past here, and you'll see what I'm gonna do in a second. I'm just bringing a big kind of swooping motion like this, and then I'm gonna connect this side with here, and I'll connect this side over here with just a little bit of a curve, because to me, a grapefruit is so big, it just has a slight curve around those edges. Then my next one I'm gonna do is a lemon. So I'm gonna have my lemon down in through here. This is maybe about an inch to an inch and a half below, so that's gonna be about my uh, the bottom of my lemon. And I'm gonna have it a little bit off to the right of my apple. So I've got it coming down in through here. And we're not gonna see the inside of our lemon. We're just gonna see a little, a little bit of the outside. So, but it's still like a slice of a lemon to me. So I'm not gonna have it too rounded at the bottom. Over on the right hand side, I think I'm gonna have this side coming in through here. And then we'll connect these two with a little bit of a curve because it's just gonna be a slice of a lemon. Then my next one, this one's gonna be huge. It's the watermelon slice that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna come down from here, maybe about two inches. That's gonna give me the bottom part of my watermelon. This is gonna take up a really huge space. We're gonna see a lot of the inside of the watermelon, and I'm gonna have it out much farther than these two in through here. So what I'm gonna do is when I do my bottom edge to it, I'm bringing it out probably about an inch or so farther than the edge of here, and I'm gonna have it a little bit rounded as well. So I'm gonna just kind of visibly come down here, maybe a little bit to the right, and start myself, and maybe I want it a little bit tipped too. So I'm gonna come down about in through here. So something like this is gonna give me my bottom edge to it, and I want it farther than this. So if this brings it to here, maybe I'm gonna go out another, I don't know, inch or so. So somewhere in through about here will work for me. And then what I'm gonna do, that's gonna be my bottom edge. I'm gonna make it look like a slice, something like our, um, our grapefruit, but it's gonna occupy a really big area. So I'm actually gonna start my my um, interior circle. I'm gonna start it way up here on my grapefruit. And when I s 
swoop it around here, it's going to go just about as far as this line here, something like this. And we're using a pencil, so if you need to, you know, modify your lines afterwards, feel free to do so. And then when I bring this around here, it's going to be pretty close to here, maybe about a half of an inch away. So my sliver, my interior sliver here is more narrow than the exterior line right there. And I'm going to bring this over in through this vicinity. And then I'm going to, from my lemon, I go up just a little bit on my lemon and bring this out. I want it to be much farther than here. So I just want to make sure that I've got this swooping out as far as I want it to before I kind of bring it back in like that. And now I've got to connect those edges. Actually, maybe this should go down just a little bit further. Let's bring this. That's the beauty of a pencil. We can just make adjustments and erase them and, and do everything that we want. I, lo I, want I want to see a lot of the inside color of that watermelon, so that's why I wanted to drop this down a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to attach the top and the bottom, so something like that, and then I'll do the same thing over on this side, something like that. Just make sure I've got kind of a natural little curve to it. Then I've got my bottom part of my pineapple is what I'm doing next. So this is just going to be a little tiny sliver. I'm going to come down maybe about an inch from here and I need this to make sense. So for me, a pineapple is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So if I come down from these two points and just kind of travel right down, 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 and just go out just a smudge, maybe about a half of an inch or so, that's going to tell me where this would maybe naturally go. And same thing with here, just travel down, straight down, straight down, and then off to the left just a little bit. Even if it's just like a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch, it doesn't need to be much. So I've got my bottom edge here. And to me, a pineapple at the bottom is kind of flat and it might dip up a little bit in the middle. So I'm going to bring this in through here and then maybe just give it a little bit of a, of a little dip up, so to speak, in through there. So it's got kind of flat and then a little dip up. Now I'm going to do my banana. So I'm going to come down from this one, maybe about an inch and a half or so, somewhere in this vicinity. At this point, I'm about almost, I would say, maybe like a fifth of the way from the bottom of my canvas or like three and a half inches or so from the bottom of my canvas. I, I have saved myself enough room for a finger down at the bottom, but if you find yourself closer to the bottom or higher up, you might want to add, if you're higher up, you might want to add another piece of fruit or um, a bigger banana or a bigger hand or something, but we'll get to that in a minute. So my banana for me is going to be wider than my pineapple. So I've got my banana, the tip of my banana is coming somewhere over in this vicinity. So I'm about maybe two and a half inches from the left and two and a half inches up from the bottom. That's going to be the tip of my banana on the left. And then over on the right, it's going to come way down and it's actually going to touch the bottom of my canvas. I'm about maybe three inches in from um, the bottom right. And this is going to be that little stem part at the top of the banana. So I'm going to start in through here. And to me, a banana is a little bit pointier um, on the end that doesn't have the stem. So that's what I'm going to kind of emulate here. I'm going to do this, give it a little bit of a curve. It doesn't have to be much, just a tiny bit of a curve in through there. And then on the top portion in through here, I'm going to bring this out towards it's the pineapple is sitting on top of the banana. So I'm having the banana come out like the little up the up the pineapple. <laughs> I'm so surprised that I haven't screwed up the names of these <laughs> fruits yet. There's so many different ones. I'm like, okay, am I going to get them all straight as I'm going? But I almost just flubbed up there. But this is my pineapple and this is my banana. So now that I've got, I came up the pineapple a little bit to create my banana. So I'm coming over like this and then it's just going to kind of curve down at the end, something like that and through there. And then on the right hand side, I know I want the end to be here. So you could even just draw yourself a little bit of a stem in through there. And then I'm going to come over here. I want it to be farther out than this. So I'm going to curve this down in through this vicinity. I'm going to overshoot my stem marker just by a little bit and bring this back in like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for here. I'm going to bring this over in through here. 
and hopefully by the time you're done it will it will look a little bit wider at this end than it does at this end and then we just have our finger to go so for me my finger I want it to to look like it is pretty darn balanced balanced with the, all these fruit and what I did for reference um, when when creating this painting is I actually used my own finger and I said what would happen if I have put pressure on it so that's my reference <laughs> and I also have my little the my second finger in through here so that's the reference that I'm using so as you're going about it you can do the same thing you can even take a picture with your cell phone or whatever to just have that visual reference of what would your finger do if it was holding up a big huge pile <laughs> of fruit so I've got mine in through here this is about where I'm gonna have it starting kind of in the middle of my canvas, something like this. And I kind of used a reference with how big is my finger um, compared to a banana <laughs> kind of thing. I'm gonna have the bottom in through here. I have a little knuckle in, in this about halfway up the finger. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can somehow get it to resemble um, a, a regular finger, it's almost even the same size. The one on the painting's a little bit bigger than my actual finger, but um, so I've got that. And then this just kind of comes straight down. It might kick out a little bit in through this vicinity. And then I have my other, my, my side finger coming out in through here. So this kind of comes over here. And I've got this, my, my little knuckle comes up just a little bit more. And then I have a little spot where you can see behind. So if my easel's in the way, I'll just pick it up a little bit so you can see that. And that's all we're gonna do. That's all, like that was nothing. It was a piece of cake, right? <laughs> that's all we're gonna do for our sketch. We will be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful sketch on here, make any little tweaks that you want and then just get ready for the next step. All right, so sometimes I think that I'm way smarter than I actually am. <laughs> so I was going about the last step and I'm like, yes, I didn't screw up on any of the names of the fruits, but it had, was quickly brought to my attention by the cameraman as soon as we cut away from that, that I've called this one, which I intend to be a lime. Apparently I called it a lemon like four times. So <laughs> this is gonna be a lime just for the record and my lemon is down here. So if I screwed up any other time, I'm so sorry, tried not to, but you know, my brain just gets away. My paintbrush controls the whole thing, not my brain, I guess. So what we're gonna do for the next step is we are gonna be doing the base coat on our pineapple and our hand. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are rust and green. So I'm going to be using rust or burnt sienna for my finger because I think that this is a great color to use as a base coat for skin because skin can come in all different tones and shades and colors and stuff. And whenever I look at any different kind of skin tone, I seem to always see this hue of this like rusty color that can be almost like um, like suntan skin or something or just the base coat for light skin or dark skin all around. It's just a great neutral kind of base coat for, in my opinion, all different kinds of skin colors. So if you are gonna plan to make your skin color a different um, color than mine, you can still utilize this rust color as the base coat. So I'm going to use that for my finger. I'm also going to use it for my pineapple. And when I'm doing this, I am not doing any fancy brush stroke. Really all I'm doing is coloring it in because I want, we're going to be having lots of additional details on top of it. So this again is just acting as a base coat or I like to lovingly refer to it as my primer coat because <laughs> it makes all the other colors adhere and look great on top of it. So I'm going ahead and doing that one. And then I have the top of my, of my pineapple that I'm gonna be using the same rust or burnt sienna kind of color for it. And then I will wash and dry my 
um, this medium brush real quick because I'm going to be utilizing the same brush for the top of the pineapple, but I'm going to be using green. So once I've got this piece all nice and filled in, and I'm bringing my color right up to the pencil edge. So you can even overlap the pencil a little bit if you find that you do have some pencil that is outside of the area where you want it to, you can always erase that pencil as well. Typically the pencil will erase nice for you. And then once I've got this on here, I'm just quickly washing and drying my um, medium brush and then I'm going to do my base coat for my my top of my um, pineapple with just green. So think of this as um, almost like spiky kind of thick pieces of plants almost like um, like an aloe vera kind of leaf where they're just really thick and hardy and they've um, you know have a lot of substance to them. We are going to be doing many more layers on this. So if it's not perfect at the moment, don't worry about it. And there are lots of different kinds of pineapples in that I um, saw that have lots of different styles for the tops of them. So if yours doesn't come out exactly like mine, don't worry about it because, you know, uh, I've kind of loosely interpreted the, the rind of the um, pineapple anyway, so you can certainly have fun with how you've got yours done. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and executed, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is I'm doing the base coat for my banana and my lemon because they're going to have the same base coat. I'm going to be using my medium brush and I am using yellow and white on my brush at the same time because I want there to be varying tones of this beautiful soft bright yellow and by utilizing the yellow and the white on my brush at the same time I will naturally get different tones throughout it. So you could pre-mix a color if you wanted to. You could pre-mix yourself a banana and lemon base coat and it would just, it, you can utilize that as like a solid color for them. Or you can do as I do, which is use both colors on your brush at the same time to speed up the process of giving your um, fruit dimensional elements. So I kind of um, like to have a lot of natural elements in my paintings and in order to do that I have these shortcuts that I take and this is one of them. Using multiple colors on my brush at the same time is definitely a shortcut for me when I want to have multiple tones throughout a particular um, object. I'm putting this base coat on the little stem as well and we'll add some more dimensional elements to that in a little bit but just going to get this on here first and I go a little bit slow around my edges. I am painting it in the direction that the um, banana, banana skin, I think it's banana skin not banana rind, banana skin, yeah it's skin I think. <laughs> um, I'm painting it in a directional brush stroke in the direction that those, um, the skin of the banana goes in. So I'm going to do my lemon next. So again, this is going to be yellow and white on my brush. And this might look a little bit brighter because the background is lighter than the background down here. And these paints will tend to be translucent, which is why I like to do multiple layers on them. And I'm painting right up to my pencil. And if you go outside the lines a little bit, don't worry. If you can see the pencil underneath your paint, don't worry because we're going to do um, additional steps and sometimes that pencil actually acts as like a nice shadow around the edges. So um, we're going to use this same brush for the next step, but you'll want to wash it and dry it in preparation. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the base coat for our lime and our watermelon. So I'm going to be using my medium brush. I'm going to be using green yellow, 
red, maybe a little white too, but we'll start with our green and yellow first. So green and yellow on my brush at the same time is going to give me my base coat for my lime. <laughs> you don't know how bad I want to call it a lemon right now. <laughs> Sometimes I just, you know, it, my brain just wants to do whatever it wants to do. So I'm, I have um, yellow and green on my brush at the same time, which has provided me this beautiful lime color. So you can, um, you could dot it, I guess, to give it a little bit of texture. But again, I'm not really terribly concerned about my brush stroke at this point, um, because even if you can see my brush stroke on that particular fruit, because we're going to be doing the additional layers. I'm using the same green and yellow as my base coat for my my um, watermelon only this time when I do this this is the first piece of fruit that we're actually seeing the inside so I'm going to do this exterior portion of it with my green and my yellow on my brush at the same time and I'll also do a little exterior line as well to show that the rind has um, traveled around the uh, the piece of fruit over on the other side, but I'm just kind of getting this area in through here. And you can see I've already got quite a bit of uh, of that natural that natural dimension that I was talking about when I was doing the banana because I'm using both of these colors at the same time on my brush. So again, you can really get some great effects when you use multiple colors on your brush at the same time. The only um, trick is to control what you're using. So if you tend to want to use white on your brush in these color combinations, that can get a little dangerous because the white can muddy it up a little bit. So typically when I'm using multiple colors, um, it's either translucent colors that can really work together and not really muddy each other. They're just kind of giving each other a little extra hint of something special um, or it's just one color plus white. So, you know, it, it varies on what I'm doing, but right now I'm just adding that, that little extra line around the edge. Now I'm gonna create a color for a base coat for the center. So I'm washing and drying this medium brush and to me, the center of a watermelon is really vibrant and uh, it's red, but it's got almost like a, a little bit of a peachy hue. So I'm gonna be using red with a tiny bit of yellow in it. So red and yellow, almost like an orangey type color. And I will, so I'm going somewhere in through here and I'm gonna add just a teeny tiny touch of white paint into it so you can really get this as vibrant as you want or as subtle as you want we are going to be utilizing a similar color for the inside of our grapefruit as well so as you're doing this you can kind of plan out for what you're going to be using for your grapefruit so red yellow and a tiny bit of white is where i'm going with this and that's a little too orange for me so i'm going to add a tiny bit more red into it and just think watermelon i mean if, if you haven't seen the inside of a watermelon you can certainly look it up and get that perfect color or just something that's similar that will represent um, a, there we go represents a nice tone for you and i'm just kind of getting this all to get a nice layer in through here. I'm bringing it right up to my lemon. We are just working on our base coats right now. So again, if you haven't watched me before, um, or if you have watched me before, I always tell you to not really worry about things being perfect, especially when we're working on these base coats because we have so much other information and details that we're going to be putting on later that it's not overly important for this these base coats to be perfect you know you want to get them in the right vicinity you want to um, have them start to tell the story of what that particular object is but you don't have to fuss over the edges being perfect or your brush strokes 
being completely even over the whole thing. So just know we're just looking for a nice coat on here. Bring it right to the edges. If it doesn't meet up perfectly, that's okay. And then you're gonna wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat of our apple and our grapefruit. So I'm using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using brown, white, red, yellow, and brown, white, red, and yellow. I think that's it. So I'm gonna start with my apple. I'm gonna do my inside of my apple with just a little bit of white and brown on my brush. So I'm thinking of this as, you know, just the inside of the apple. I think I'm using, gonna use a little bit of yellow. That turned a little bit too brown on me. So I add a little bit of white and yellow on my brush. So that's the beauty of painting. When you do something then you're like, hmm, I didn't like that too much. Acrylic paint is great because you can always just kind of tweak it as you go. Yeah, that looks much more natural. It was a little bit too, a little bit too dark for me. So I added a bit of white and yellow to my brush. And I'm just kind of bringing this over into this little sliver here. And then I'm going to wash my brush real quick and I'm gonna pick up some red paint and I'm gonna use just red paint for the base coat of my apple. So again, similar to how I did my, my um, watermelon. Gosh, I, gotta th I have to think about the names of these fruits. It, it would have been easier if I just picked one fruit and did a whole bunch, uh, a stack of the whole same fruit. But um, once you've got this base coat on the main section of it, you'll bring a little sliver of that line or of that um, the skin of the apple around the edges along the back side of it. So that way it, you can see the, that it's a slice of the apple and we've got the, um, the portion of the skin is represented over on the other side of the interior that we're seeing. So I've got that in through there, and then I'm just gonna use the little tip of my brush to get a little edge over here. And you just wanna make sure that when you're rounding this corner that they look like they belong together. So I'm just gonna make sure that they look like they belong together, that works for me there. And then I'm going to do the interior, well I guess you could do the interior or the exterior of your grapefruit. The interior, I'm gonna have a similar color that I have for here. So I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush. I think I'm gonna add maybe, I want it to be a little bit different than this. So I think I'm gonna just make it a little bit more on the pinker side. So I'll add a little bit more red and a touch more white, just so it looks a tiny bit different than the um, watermelon. You could use the same exact color. I'm, I'm sure nobody's going to notice if it's, if it's a tiny bit different or if it's exactly the same because once we put the details on it, it will, um, it will read as a different type of fruit. So again, I'm just doing the inside. You could have done the outside first. It doesn't matter. We're just really coloring in sections right now. So if you, um, if you ended up doing the exterior of it first, that's totally fine. Um, and again, I am just painting in the inside of my, my grapefruit. And then for the exterior color, I'm gonna use this mixture and I'm gonna add some yellow and white to it. And I'm not going to make it a perfect color because to me, um, on grapefruits, they have like more pink spots or more yellow spots. There's different varieties of grapefruit that come in different colors and shapes and stuff. So I'm just gonna take some of this and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow and then whatever happens is gonna happen. It's gonna be like a light peachy kind of color. So I've got that on my brush and you can pick up some more of the peachy color if you want to. And I'm just gonna get it to come um, to have this assortment of yellows and peaches, uh, peach colors on it. I want it to look different than the lemon that's below. So I wanna make sure that there's enough of that peach type color represented in it. So if your if your rind on your grapefruit is too similar to your lemon, just add some more of that interior color to your brush, and that'll help you to get it to have a little bit different of a of a color 
that it'll set itself apart. And then we are going to be, let's see, what are we gonna do next? We're gonna actually switch to our, no, let's use our, let's use the same medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your grapefruit colored in here, I'm just getting my little ends, you can wash and dry this medium brush. And I'm trying to get my ends here. I'm not getting enough paint on my brush, so that's that's posing me a bit of a challenge while I'm trying to talk. There we go. So we're gonna wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're creating pineapple texture. So this is gonna be all those little spiky pieces that you see on the outside of a pineapple. And we're gonna try and give it the a good illusion to have some nice some nice texture there. So what I need to do first is create a color that is lighter than this background color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my burnt sienna and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white and a touch of red. So this is an accent's gonna kind of make it into a, a lighter, almost a skin color. I want mine a little bit lighter than that, so I'm gonna add a bit more white to it. And if it's too pink, add a little bit more yellow. So you're just going for almost like a, a nice light tan kind of color. So I'm going somewhere in here and I've got this sitting next to my burnt sienna so you can see the difference of the two of them and you wanna make sure that you can see the difference because there's no sense in doing it if it's not gonna be evident when you go to put it on your canvas. So once I've got the color that I want, I like to take my brush and spin it in the side of my palette so it's gonna be pretty pointy. I don't need it to get too pointy, but enough so I have a little bit more control of this. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm doing messy dots that are in a diagonal kind of pattern. So that's gonna give you the pattern that you see on a typical um, pineapple. And when I get to the top edge, I will bump it out past the, um, the edge of it. So when I put that color on there, to me, it's not showing me enough contrast next to this color here. So I'm actually gonna lighten it up a little bit. And the reason why it's doing that is because this is on a light background, so it looks a little bit lighter than it does on here. So I'm adjusting it on the fly so, you can, so I can make sure that the viewer can see the difference of the colors on my canvas itself. So I've adjusted it a little bit more. So now that I've got that, we'll go at it again. So yeah, there we go, now we can see the difference. So now that I've got one, I'm just gonna kind of make myself these messy kind of triangle, well not triangle, um, diagonal dots. And I'm leaving a little space in between. This is gonna give you that um, almost grid pattern that you see on the pineapples. So we've got this and this, and just make, I'm bumping it out over on the top portion of it. So that way it gives it that, that texture. And of course, some are gonna be hidden behind you know your top part, or some will be broken at the bottom if they were cut off, but you can certainly make them as you know, perfect or imperfect as you want. Just if you can keep them in that diagonal type um, pattern, that's going to show you the the um, the pattern that you typically will see. So I did that on the top piece. I'm going to come down to the bottom and do the same thing. So on the exterior is where I'm going to be popping them out a bit and you can do them in similar size if you want to. You can make them smaller, whatever whatever works for you is totally fine. And they can be, you know, of a little bit different size if you want them to. And then we do have a, another couple little things to do to get this texture to look nice and almost realistic. So now that I've done that, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up, without washing my brush, I'm picking up white and yellow so I'm using white, yellow, and that tan color. And this is gonna add those little prickly spike things to the top of it. So even if your paint underneath is still wet, that's okay. And I'm gonna just kind of pull up these little prickly 
spike things and I'm using yellow and white. You could certainly utilize just white if you want to. I'm not doing them all in the same direction because to me when I look at a pineapple they kind of have like a nub at the base and then they kind of curve and poke up with a little spike at the end but Again, there's different varieties of pineapples, so maybe the one I'm familiar with is not the one you're familiar with, but um, I just reloaded my brush with some more white and yellow, and you know, this is not necessarily meant to look photorealistic, but I'm still trying to give it some of the um, natural elements. This one underneath here, these might be hidden by my pineapple or my watermelon of sorts, so if I don't get them all on there, that's why my, my canvas is, is almost dancing as I'm doing this with my, with my brush. I'm, I'm poking it pretty hard and it's just kind of bouncing out a little bit. And then that is all we're going to be doing for the textured part. We'll add shadows onto it later, but right now we're going to move on to the next step and we're going to do that with our small brush. So once you've got your your texture on your pineapple, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our finger and our fingers. I was gonna say hand, but it's just the fingers. Um, I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are my burnt sienna, brown, red, white, and may maybe a little black. So as I approach this, what I'm really thinking is wrinkles, shadows, and highlights. I tend to, when I'm doing any kind of skin, I tend to use my own skin as my reference because it's the closest thing to <laughs> me. So it's, a, it's an easy reference to go by. You can certainly just kind of emulate what I'm doing or you can use your own skin or you can use your friend's skin or you can use a photo reference of somebody else's skin. So you can certainly have fun with the tone that you want. So for me, the whole hand is kind of in the shadow of this um, fruit stack that we have but there's gonna be an extra deep shadow right up at the top where it's kind of near the banana. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm really just gonna kind of start with my shadowy areas and my wrinkles because that's the darkest area and I'm gonna work from dark to light. So I will be starting with just a little bit of brown on my brush. I never use a ton of paint because I want this paint to dry really fast so I can continue to make layers and layers because when I think of skin, skin has a hundred layers, probably more than that, but has a lot of layers to make it look realistic. So as I'm painting a area such as this, I don't use a lot of paint. So whenever I'm doing something, it will dry really fast. And then if I want to put another layer on top of it, I have the ability to do so. So I have brown paint on my brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think, where are my shadows? I definitely have one right underneath here. And this one's going to be a pretty firm one. So I'm going to have this one coming down the um, finger quite a bit. So maybe somewhere in through here is where it'll trail off. I also have what I'll refer to as a shadow where my fingernail meets my skin. So I'm going to put almost the outline of my fingernail on in through here. So I'm gonna have my fingernail come right to about there, and then I'll just kind of give myself a little thin outline of it in through here, something like that. Then I think of my wrinkles. So I'm gonna have wrinkles at my knuckles. So I've got a little bit of a wrinkle in through here, and I'm just using brown paint at this point. I've got where I bumped it out over here, I've got a little bit of a, some wrinkles on my knuckle in through there. I would probably have a little bit of shadow down here on the bottom left. I'm going to have a little bit of shadow between my fingers in through here. So you don't necessarily have to do a clean line, so to speak, for shadowy areas. It could just be a gradual shadow. Like I feel like there'd be a gradual shadow underneath this finger here and maybe up where this crease is in through here. So again, right now I'm just using brown paint. 
So now that I've got my shadowy areas on there, now I've got to start working towards the light. So my darkest area for me is going to be on the left hand side. And what I'm going to do without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of that burnt sienna just to make sure that I've got good coverage over here on the left hand side. So I will probably use mostly just burnt sienna on the left hand side and as I work my way towards the right, I will add more of my what I'll refer to as my lighter skin tone, <laughs> which is very light as you can see, but it's going to be in the shadows. So, um, it will have a little bit more depth to it on my painting than I than it does in in reality. So now that I've got that in there, before I move to the far, far right with the light, light colors, I kind of want to tackle my fingernail. And to me, a fingernail is usually a little bit pinker than your skin. So what I can do is I can take a little bit of red, my burnt sienna, and a touch of white. And you can pre-mix it or you can just, you know, mix it on your canvas, but it's a little bit of red, burnt sienna, and white. And I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of like a pinky kind of hue. And then without washing my brush, I pick up a little bit of white in order to represent the little moon. Uh, I don't even know what it's called. The white spot at the bottom of your fingernail. Not everybody has one, but some people do. So something in through here. I don't need a lot of paint. Just the hue of it will, will suffice. And then maybe a little um, reflective kind of shine with a little bit lighter of a color. So that works in through there. Now I'll start working on my lighter skin as it comes to the right. So I could almost get away with the color that I used for my pineapple, but I think I'm gonna make it just a little bit pinker. So I'm gonna add a touch of red and a touch of white. And again, you can adjust this to whatever skin tone you want. And what I usually do when I'm trying to see if I'm close to the vicinity that I wanna be, is I actually take my brush and I hold it next to my skin and I say, oh, is that close? And if it's close, that means I'm good enough in my, in my book. So once I've got it, pretty good to what I want. I'm going to start adding my highlight and it's not just going to be with this lighter color. It will also probably be with a little bit of that burnt sienna. I want it to um, blend in nicely. So I'm adding a bit of this over to the right hand side and I've got a lot of paint on my brush right now, which is not what I recommend. So I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I like to, like I was saying before, make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush because I want it to, I want to be able to blend. I want to be able to have it dry quickly for me. So while um, I'm doing this process, I can add my layers as I see fit. So I'm just adding that lighter skin tone with very little bit of paint on my brush into the areas that I I feel that it needs to go. And if you think that you've put too much, just bring some of that burnt sienna back. That will help you to build those layers nice and naturally. And you can, you know, of course, just continue to use your own hand as reference as you're going through this process. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna start to add a bit more onto my knuckle in through here, because I feel like this would definitely be the lightest area. And you can certainly, it doesn't just have to be one light tone of paint. You can certainly add multiple um, tonal values if you want it to be even lighter on the top. You want it look, to look like there's, um, you know, maybe a light source that is casting a bit more light on that finger. You can certainly add a bit more of a highlight over there. And you just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel like you have enough lightness on it. It is of whatever skin tone you want it to be. And then again, I'm just building it in, in small layers. I'm not going too fast. I'm not going too um, aggressive while I'm doing this. I'm just building it lighter on that right hand side. I think I want this to be a touch lighter in through here. And then once you have your fingers all nice and highlighted with the with whatever 
proper shadow you feel is working on your um, on your painting we will be utilizing this same brush for the next step so you're going to want to wash it and dry it that's looking good and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing the insides of our watermelon and our grapefruit because they're pretty similar in colors um so I think we can tackle both of these on one step. We're gonna use a small brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are um, the inside color of my watermelon. I'll probably use a little bit of the inside color of my grapefruit too. I'll be using white. I need some seeds in my watermelon, so I'll be using black and maybe a little brown, but I'll let you know when we get to it. So I'm gonna start with my watermelon. So I'm gonna use some of the color that I originally used on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in essence, do a second layer, but when I come over to the right-hand side, I'm gonna be using a little bit of white in the mixture so it gets a little bit lighter on that right-hand side. So I've got the, the that um, reddish, orangey type color. This is gonna provide me with some great um, vibrancy to it. And then once I come over towards this right hand side, I'm going to just make sure I've got good coverage in through there and up in through here. And I'm picking up a tiny bit of white on my dirty brush. I did not wash my brush and I'm gonna get it to go lighter and lighter in this front right hand corner. You can get it to go as bright as you want, but I'm just gonna get it to go a little bit brighter just to indicate that this is in fact um, ha uh, kind of hanging out uh, um, outside the edge a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up more of the white paint and I'm going to be doing an outline around the edge of this between my colored part and my um, green part. So this is gonna act as that inside little lip to the rind. You could also use a bit of yellow on your brush if you wanted to, which I might opt to do in a second, but I'm just gonna attempt with this um, yellow, or excuse me, white to start. I am going to get it to blend in with the rind color or the interior color in a second, but I just kind of want to get it started here. So right now I'm just using white with my dirty paintbrush and I'm getting this, I'm not getting rid of all that green edge over there. That is still, want, I want that to be evident. And once I've got this white uh, area on here, now I'm going to pick back up some of that original um, interior color and just get this inside edge to blend a little bit. So it in essence looks like it's going from light to dark or it's transitioning from the inside color of the watermelon to that light bright edge of the um, of the rind. So it might take you a couple of go arounds to just get that to blend in a little bit. But again, you could certainly use a touch of yellow on your brush as well. Some of the, um, the watermelons that I was looking at definitely had a little bit of yellow in that area. So just feel free to kind of continue to, to tweak this until you get it into that um, blending area that you want. That's looking pretty good. And then when it comes to the one up here, I'm gonna utilize that lighter color again, just to kind of get a, almost a, a finished coat on here, because I know that the, the here goes my doggies. Um, I, it, the paint is translucent, so that first layer will look a little rough and a little streaky, so just adding that second coat on there works. Now I'm gonna pick up white with a tiny bit of black, because I want this to be more I don't want it to just be white. I guess you could use like white with a touch of um, brown too, but I'm choosing to do white with a touch of black. And what this is, this is gonna be an exterior line between the peach color and my rind color. And then I'm going to pull it in to the center. And you'll see how I'm gonna do that in a second. So right now I'm just doing a line 
between my Rhine and the inside color with white with just a teeny tiny bit of black on my brush so it's just not one note this way it gives you those little um, textural pieces so now that I've got that here comes the fun part so I'm thinking that the center of my um, grapefruit is sitting underneath my apple so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a whole bunch of little lines from the center of my apple to the edge of my apple I mean from the center of my apple to the edge of my grapefruit I almost just did it again there and all the while I'm thinking they're coming from that center area so I'm just trying to keep my lines in um, the correct direction so as you go around these corners it might look a little bit tricky but you can you can do it I know you can and then I'm going to go ahead and do these they can even be kind of like sketchy type lines they don't have to be perfect the um, little skin pieces between I don't know if it's called skin but the little pieces in your grapefruit between those sections they definitely they're not terribly visible but they they're there so now that I've got that I'm gonna go ahead and do the this little um, connector piece think of this like a little web of sorts that's gonna connect it to the edge so it almost kind of just pulls in a gradual little downward motion I've got a little curve here and then it just curves into that line that's going to meet the center so you can start in the line and then just curve it into the next one and that will give you that motion of um, those those connector pieces they're like thicker as they get near the um, the exterior of the fruit and then we are going to be using let's see let's use our let's use our small brush for the next step as well so once you've got your grapefruit all, oh wait we need to put our seeds in our watermelon hold on we're almost done I've got these last little pieces in through here and then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush real quick because I have to put some seeds in my watermelon and all the watermelon I've ever eaten have black seeds so I'm gonna put some black seeds in my watermelon and I don't want them to be too in your face so I washed and dried my brush and I'm going to just do these little tiny sporadic little polka dots I and I think the seeds are more concentrated in the center of the watermelon I could be totally wrong on that one but um, I'm putting more um, in the center and then we'll use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the stripes on the watermelon. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I will be using yellow, white, green, and brown. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have them in a diagonal type um, look and I'm going to have light stripes and dark stripes and my light stripes are going to be primarily white, yellow, and green and my dark stripes are going to be primarily green and brown. You could also use a little yellow but you can certainly go with whatever you feel is natural. So I'm going to start with white, yellow, and green on my brush at the same time and I'm going to be doing a squiggly line that's probably about an inch or a half of an inch wide it's kind of, and it's at a diagonal um, way and they're going to be kind of equally spaced apart oh that needs more white and yellow kind of whoops that's too much um, kind of about a half of an inch away from each other and you might have yours way brighter than mine or darker than mine it's really however intense you want your stripes to be you can have them much more organized than I have mine but I'm just going for some some fun summer watermelon that's got lots of movement in its stripes and again I think there's different kinds of watermelons too so I like to play with the natural side of things and give myself a lot of excuses if it doesn't turn out exactly as I had planned <laughs> so if it is you know 
if you wanted your stripes to be more organized, then great. I'm sure that will represent some kind of cool watermelon. If they're messy, I'm sure that will represent some kind of other watermelon. So just have fun with it. So that's kind of where I'm going to place my lighter stripes. Now I'm going to, I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some green and a little bit of brown. I think I might have my ones over on the sides a little bit darker, so those might have a little bit more brown in them. That might be a little too dark. I just added, picked up a little bit more green. And if you have a little bit of space between your light section from your dark section, that's gonna look great. The, the color diversity is what this is all about. So you can have some bright areas and you can have some not fully colored in areas and it's all going to look awesome because the messier this is and the more just more um, variety in these colors that's what's going to make it look supernatural in a in a good way and then once you've got those on there and just kind of messing mine up even more because i like the idea of them being nice and messy i think i might add a little bit of a little bit of lightness up at the top here um we are going to be using our Let's use our, I think we're going to use our, I'm, I want to use my medium and my small brush for next step. I was going to say one or the other, but I think I want to use, eh, let's use our medium brush for the next step. If I need a change, I'll let you know. So wash and dry your medium brush, get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the shadows to the whole canvas. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I might switch to my small brush too as the process proceeds um, based on where I'm going on certain ones, but I'll let you know if I do, well, you'll, it'll be quite evident if I switch brushes, but I'll let you know. Um, so how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using mostly black and brown but at times, I might use a little bit of water to thin it out so I can see through those colors to make sure it really just represents a shadow instead of just a big black splotch. Um, and I might at times need to pick up some of the color that it sits on. So that might not happen, but I'm just kind of forewarning you that it, it may happen if I run into an issue where I'm like, ooh, I put too much there. I can always go back into the whatever color it sits on. So when doing these shadows, we are not only doing a shadow for, let's say, the contour of the particular object, but we're also doing shadows underneath them, and we're doing shadows of what they would be casting the shadow that they would cast upon the object below them. So I've got a couple of light sources on mine. I have my light source behind them, but I'm also picturing there to be a light source somewhere up above, um, but not too far, enough so it kind of casts a highlight in through here and maybe some of the fruits are casting a little bit of a shadow on whatever they're, whatever is underneath them. So I'm going to start in the middle and we'll just kind of work our way out. And by the time I get, you know, to fruit number two or three, you'll probably catch the gist of what I'm doing. So you may um, want to use more brown or more black, wherever your comfort zone is. I just recommend that you don't use a lot of paint to start. But as you get more comfortable, you might feel that you can use a, a little bit of paint. So I'm going to start on my lemon in through here and know that I will be doing highlights in a bit so the highlight will add some extra um, form to the shape. So I know that my lemon is pretty darn light so I'm going to start with a little bit of brown on the tip of my brush and again this might be one of those areas where you feel that you want to use your small brush but I'm going to just start with my medium brush and if I run into Oh, time where I want to use my small brush, I'll do that. So I know that my grapefruit is going to cast a little bit of a shadow on my lemon itself. So, oops, I don't have enough paint on my brush at all. So I just reloaded. So I am casting a little bit of a shadow right underneath, just using that brown paint to get that on there. And you can always use a touch of water as well on your brush. That will help to um, give you a nice smooth brush stroke. 
So something like that. This is going to be a nice clean shadow from it, from just uh, it going right underneath it. I will have a little bit of a tiny shadow right underneath my lemon as well. So I'm going to put a tiny one sitting right underneath on top of my watermelon. It's just going to be right here, right at the bottom. So again, right now I'm just using brown. I might end up using a little bit of black um, if I don't feel that when this dries it is dark enough in areas. And I also feel that this um, grapefruit would cast a, a longer kind of shadow over in this corner. So I'm going to extend this out a bit further onto my lemon itself. And this can be a little bit more translucent if you want it to be and you can always utilize a bit of water on your brush that will help to bring that into a more translucent type of a shadow. I also feel it would cast a shadow upon my watermelon below so I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow onto the actual watermelon underneath it so something like this and a shadow is meant to be dark a uh, shade or darker something that's darker than what it sits on it doesn't always have to be black so don't feel that you have to always use black as a shadow this is clearly you can see through this I'm using it in a translucent kind of way so that looks good to me so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right on to my grapefruit so my grapefruit oh I, I need a little shadow over here on the edge sorry about that I want a little shadow on the edge of my lemon over here. So I put brown and I'm also gonna use a little bit of my original color, yellow, to get this. This is a contour shadow. This is gonna add the shape around the edge of it. So just adding a little bit in through there and maybe a touch over here. So most of these fruits will have a little bit of a contour shadow as they go around the edge. That's what I'm gonna do with my grapefruit in through here. So I'm gonna use a little bit of brown with that original color just to give myself a bit of a shadow around those edges. So one's there. Again, brown with a little bit of my grapefruit color and maybe a little bit in through here. And these contour shadows don't have to be much. It just tells the story of the shape of that particular object. And again, you can imagine your light source to be wherever you want it to be. You can have multiple light sources, which would add shadows and highlights all over the place. Um, I'm going to put a little shadow underneath my piece of apple. So this is going to be just brown on my brush. It's going to give me this little bit of a shadow underneath my apple. And again, if you felt that black was um, more conducive to your painting style, you could certainly for these close shadows, the ones that are right underneath the object, you could certainly add, um, use that. I'm gonna put my contour shadow on the edge of my apple. So I'm gonna go red and brown. So I'm gonna use that over here. I might put a little bit more on the bottom too because I feel this apple would maybe be um, rounded and maybe dipping in a little bit as it's at, at the bottom edge of it. So again, just kind of sometimes just using your um, your own intuition as to where something dips in that will tell you where it should get a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just putting my my little contour shadows on my apple and the center of my apple right now is really streaky because I have not put a second coat on it, which I will do in a minute when I add my highlights on here. But right now I'm just adding my brown with a little bit of red to get that on there. Now I'm gonna go right onto my lime, <laughs> not my lemon. I have to really concentrate every time I get to this one. I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. <laughs> so I just put some brown, I washed and dried my brush or I wiped it on my pants, one or the other, and I'm putting my shadow underneath my pineapple uh, that's cast upon my lime right in through here and then I'm going to go ahead I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow that my lime is casting upon my apple which is going to be a more narrow one because it's definitely kind of closer so just a little tiny line in through here and then I'm going to do my contour shadow which would be um, brown 
yellow, and green, and that's going to be over on the sides. And again, these will be much more um, detail oriented when I add those little bits of highlights onto it. But this just starts to tell the story of, of the shape of it. And if you felt that that pineapple would be casting a larger shadow, you could certainly pull that shadow down further. So you could certainly use that as whatever um, thought process that you want. So I have little shadows on my um, pineapple topper here. So I'm gonna use a touch of brown and I'm going to put a little sh um, shadow underneath the edge of my pineapple top, just at the bottom lip of that, just because I feel that it might curve in a smudge. And then I'm gonna just, um, in a quick and um, painterly fashion, just put little shadows underneath these um, spiky areas. And this is gonna add just a little bit more to the dimensional element of those, um, of these little pieces that are poking out. I'm gonna add a couple of shadows in my um, topper up in through here. So I have green and brown on my brush. I might use a little bit of black in a second, but really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of adding some um, darker marks throughout these little pieces so that so it appears to be three-dimensional and you can even in this center area you can utilize these dark colors to almost give you individual little pieces of this plant type topper that is um, adorning the upper region of your pineapple. So something like that. And you could even use, if you have to or want to, you could put a shadow uh, underneath the um, some of these pieces that will be cast upon the actual um, top itself. I've just put a little bit of black on my brush in order to get an extra dark little um, shadow in through there. And I'm gonna, I started in the center, I worked my way up, now I'm gonna work my way back down to get these last couple of areas. So I've got my pineapple, I'm gonna use green and brown to get my contour shadows along the edge. So just green and brown. And if you're utilizing a little bit of water on your brush, you'll get this to be translucent, um, which means that you can almost just rub it on top of the other, um, paint that you did and you'll still be able to see that other paint underneath it which gives you that great um, three-dimensional effect to it. That's the actual natural shadow. So I've got, I just reloaded my brush with some brown so I can get the shadow on my pineapple that is cast upon it by the um, watermelon. So I'm adding just some brown in through here to get a nice shadow going on there. I do need to do my um, little shadows underneath these pieces as well. So just a little bit of brown on my brush is gonna, like we did at the on the top part of the pineapple, I'm just adding these additional little shadows underneath these um, little prickly things that we have going here. So just a little bit of brown on my brush. Then I need a shadow that's cast upon my um, banana. So first I'm gonna do the shadow from my pineapple. So I have a little bit of a shadow in through here. This one I think would be kind of close. So I'm gonna do a little shadow in through here. And then I have a shadow from my watermelon. My watermelon is huge. So you get to use your best judgment as to how big you want this other shadow to be. This shadow of here could be cast upon the whole banana if you wanted to, but I'm gonna kind of just reserve it to um, maybe just a portion, and I want it to be a little bit um, less or more see-through than the one from the pineapple. I might have just called the watermelon a pineapple, but I meant to call it a watermelon. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I added a bunch of water onto my brush with my brown, and that's going to be, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I have a lot of water on my brush right now and I'm gonna have my shadow from my watermelon pretty darn big. So I'm gonna have it, I would say right about out in through here. 
and I want it to be pretty see-through so that way it looks like it's a far distance away and then I just have one little shadow left to go I can hear my my doggies they're so they're so time appropriate sometimes so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add a little bit of a shadow underneath my banana and then we're gonna use our we're gonna use the same brush for the next step so once you've got your shadow under your banana maybe add a little bit of dot there and a little bit on your little stem um, you can wash and dry this medium brush just about there and you're ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to be finishing our fruit which is going to be primarily made up of highlights I'm going to be using my small brush um, so this is going to be the highlights and it's going to be any little final details that we need on the, the pieces of fruit. So the majority of the color that I'm going to be using is white plus whatever other color I've used for that particular piece of fruit. So the lemon, for instance, I'll be using white mostly with maybe a little bit of yellow to get it to blend into the neighboring area. Um, I'm going to be using my small brush. Like I said, I'll be starting in the middle and I'm just going to be kind of maybe working my way up and then back down. So I've got white paint on my small brush. I'm going to be, these are going to be mostly kind of contour type highlights. So wherever you feel that the um, particular piece of the fruit would stick out the most, that's where you're going to put the highlight. So again, I'm just starting with a bit of white on my brush and as I get towards those edges if I feel that I need to pick up some of the original color just to make sure that it is blended with the neighboring areas I will certainly do that and you just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel that you've got the brightest area as much as you want it to be that's looking pretty good I like my highlights to be nice and nice and bright so the highlights bring them to life in my in my visual opinion so I like those highlights to really kind of pop and and be um, telling of the shape and of the light source and all that good stuff so that looks pretty good to me maybe maybe a little more blending right in through there and then I'm just gonna move my way right up into the grapefruit so again I've got my white paint that's gonna start start this off and I'm just kind of rubbing it in and and blending it out towards the sides I'll pick up some of my original grapefruit color of my rind and I can just kind of get those edges to to blend a little bit and again you can get that you know those highlights to be as bright as you want and do any little tweaking that you feel you might um, want to do on them. I've got my apple here. So again, I'm going to start with my white paint. So I know that white and my original color, which was red, can very easily go pink on me. And I don't necessarily want a pink apple. So I am also going to be using a little bit of yellow within my apple um, color in order to get it to not go too pink on me. So I started with white and then I added a bit of yellow and now I'm going into my red to make sure that it is um, blended well enough. And I am noticing as I am doing my apple here that I completely missed my little apple stem. So I will put that on in just a second here, but I want to make sure that I've got the rest of the apple all nice and colored in the way that I want it to. And apples, of course, can come in many different shades and varieties. So whatever color apple that you would like to have, feel free to make it such. I think I want that highlight to be the brightest right in through here. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and put my little stem on. So I'm going to use some black and some brown on my brush. And I think I'm going to have it coming out from in through here. Maybe give myself a little, a little button end to it so you can see it. I'll go put myself a little bit of a highlight on it while I'm here. Might as well, might as well finish it up. So you can of course make this whatever whatever length that you would like it to be 
and coming out of whatever area now that I'm here, of course, now I want to do all this kind of tweaking to this edge of my apple in through here, but I'm just going to add a little little shadow in through there. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to my lime. So again, I'm going to go with some white to start. So this is going to be in through here is where I'm going to put this highlight and yellow and green were my original color so I'm just adding some yellow and green to my brush to make sure that I've got it blended in with the neighboring area and of course you can tweak it to whatever value you want if you want it lighter or darker or greener or yellower you can feel free to make it whatever um, intensity works for you so then I've got my this I think we we might be all set on if you feel that you need any more little tweaking on your um, on your pineapple you can I just added a bit of burnt sienna to this but we kind of tackled that already with the highlights that was that was its own little special piece so when I go up to my um, plant area up top, I'm going to be using white, but I'm also going to be using green as my, as my highlight colors. So I think I'm initially going to use both white and green on my brush at the same time to give myself these nice um, fluid kind of highlights with, with both colors on my brush at the same time and then I'll come back with a couple of little maybe just white tips on it but this is looking pretty good just having both colors the green and the white on my brush at the same time I'm digging how this is coming out but I might I might opt to put just a bit of um, just white on my brush in a second here yeah that's looking pretty neat and yeah I just picked up just white I'll add a couple of extra little I suppose you could use some yellow too in this particular section um, so you can certainly feel free to tweak that as much as you want. That's looking pretty three-dimensional and it's got a lot of texture and a lot of motion to it. So that's good. Now I'm going to work my way back down. I don't think I need anything on my pineapple. Maybe a little extra, I don't know, yellow and green highlight around the edge of it. I don't know if this is even necessary but I guess if you wanted to add a bit more of something on it but I, I think we hit that one pretty pretty darn good um, so if you feel you need to do anything else to that one feel free to do so I don't think I need to do anything to this little guy in here um, because we already we already added all, all the details that we needed but if you felt you needed any little last minute tweaks on it feel free to do so I definitely need a highlight on my banana because I want it to be nice and vibrant like my lemon. So I'm washing and drying my small brush. Again, I'm going with white is my starting color. I want a whole bunch of highlight in through here. And I want it to make sense with my shadow too. So you might end up going over your shadow a bit um, just because it might be the nature of the beast if you want to have a good coverage. And if you need to, you can always, um, you know, re-identify your shadow if you need to. But you might just be able to go over it and you'll still see it and it'll, and it'll work out just fine for you. But I definitely want to have a good amount of white and yellow in through this area to catch some nice highlight in through here. And as you go towards the um, shadowy area, you might just find you just have to have some yellow and white on your brush at the same time just to make sure you have good coverage and you don't have any see-through areas where you can see that background through it so you just kind of keep tweaking it the way that you want some people like to see those um, almost grooves that that appear on bananas um, so if you want to add more groove like texture to it um, you can certainly do that with um, lighter and darker shades of your yellow and and white and i want some of this highlight over here on this edge oops i think i had a little red on my brush there that's the joy of um working with a, a messy palette i haven't i probably should have put more yellow on my palette to get it out of the danger zone but 
I just like, you know, whatever happens, happens. So if I've got a little a little tinge of orange on bone banana, that's that's quite all right. It'll it'll all work out in the in the long run. And then we have one tiny little step left to go. So once you've got all of your highlights on and you've done any little last minute tweaks that you feel that you want to do, we will be using this same small brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going to sign this one in the bottom left. I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using black paint. You could certainly use whatever color you would like. You can sign it wherever you'd like. Some people like to sign their whole name or their first name or they like to put a date on it or a symbol. Whatever you want is totally fine. It is your identifying mark. There are no rules, at least not in my art book, there aren't. So that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you painted yourself a super vibrant, yummy looking painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.